Alright, today we are going to do Next.js as chosen by you. Just get the right thing up. Obviously this is what we were playing with yesterday. It's got a little bit further but I haven't really touched it. Howdy howdy, you've got a new role. You are now the mod. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see how this works because um, I'm not sure how we should design it. So we could do. We could do like a Figma frame just to get an idea of what we want to make. So like, I know you can probably just give this. We'll go, oh, what am I doing? Um, height 1080 and a width of 920. And we'll just sort of push that there. So that's kind of like, the screen real estate we have. Um, but it's kind of like, what do we want this? Um, what do we actually want this to look like? So we've got options, I guess. So if we go to something like, um, let's just search for stream overlay design. Let's try designer. Um, all right, these aren't actually designs. So they're all pretty similar. Um, like it tends to be like a bottom banner, like you can see here, there, and then this one like up here. Um, and then you need somewhere to sort of put an image Yeah, this. So we kind of. I think we go with something pretty simple, you know, like some kind of gray bar. We can work out what a good consistent sort of width will be. And we can do one this way. Kind of similar to how we got it, but maybe we can mix it up a bit. We could do something. And the good thing about this is because it's in HTML and CSS, we can just do whatever we want. So if we um, start a new project, um, I can't remember what the command is. So I'm going to go to Next.js and find it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, MPX create next app. Yep, I thought so. <laughs> wow. Um, let's go with uh, I already have something called Twitch somewhere, but it'll be alright. We'll go with this. Has everyone in here seen Next or used Next before? I can do a quick walkthrough of how that works if you want. Yeah, I'm a fan. Um, I don't get to work with it a lot. Um, but yeah, for those that haven't seen it, um, I'll just show you what you get. So you got your pages, it's pretty straightforward. This is your app, 
starting index starter. I mean, it's easy to see if we just run it, to be honest. Um, it should just allow us to do yarn dev. Um, to be honest, I just want to just want to create something with next um, on my GitHub because I don't actually have anything on there. So there we go. Next.js. There is our screen. And then it should make sense what these things map up to. There we go. Cool. So yeah. But yeah, purely just to um, give it a change up. So you know, here. I mean, it's 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 rapid as well. Um, so we just do like, hey, it's really fast. Um, and then we should just be able to deploy this straight away. Um, although I might have to push it. I might have to associate it with a uh, link this directory, create and configure a new site. Uh, yep. Um, and oh, what is the published directory of this? I can't remember what it is as default. It's just build, isn't it? Or is it everything in public? What's the command I need to run? Go back. I always come into these, pro I'm never the one that sets up the project. I'm the one that just comes in and does stuff on it. So, um, yep, that looks good. I can't remember which part we push. Where am I at in the process of doing, of building this? This is like the ex the exact start. <laughs> I got a rough idea of what I'm gonna make, but the main idea for this is to uh, hook it up to my Twitch commands, which are on something else using X state. So like I already have this, um, I already have this page, which is, I can never remember the name of it. Um, it's Twitch. Right, let me just find it. Let me show you it and it'll make more sense. Okay, it is... Not that one. Okay, cool. Right, so I already have a site here. So it's just a blank site. It obviously does nothing. But when you run uh, the commands in chat, so you'd have seen two horns, but it's because it's firing here. Um, so if you do heads, they're going to drop in this browser window as well as actually in the... So if I do some more... Yeah, you see they drop here. Um, double keys. But yeah, I want to bring this all in and integrate it with the overlays. So then I can just... It's so it's a lot easier to port my um, OBS settings around. <laughs> Closing this tab. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, that's the reason for it. Because it gets a bit hard to maintain. Plus, I want to do more... Um, I'd like to do some Procreate streams. And I did a little bit more looking at that yesterday. And the easiest way to do it is to just stream off of Mac. Um, so I can do that. Um, but it'd be easier if I could just 
drop a browser sort of source in with all the overlays because I hate having to copy it all across. Um, or you do an export and just import it, but it just feels cleaner to just drop the whole thing. <laughs> um, right. I just need to... check this out because I haven't actually looked at this um, what do I have to do so I'm just checking out the Netlify star because I've not I've not done any next deployments I'll be honest um, I know you can do it on Versal but I want to have a go at doing it on Netlify and I've not had the chance to do it yet I feel like there should be something in here that just sort of says oh, okay cool npm run build npm run export publish out Run build, next build, export, and let's just see what that does. So we did next build. Um, I don't think there's an export script actually set up, is there? Nope. So let's copy that. Export. Plus, I want to do some. Um, I want to do some stinger, like videos for transitions, and I've got some ideas about how I'm going to do that as well. But I want to bake them in um, to this repo, so I can just have everything under one thing. But I've not really looked at that much. I just had some ideas. Um, what is this? Rad. I'm too distracted today. Sorry. <laughs> right. So, what did that do? That gave us this out directory. And then this out directory needs to be published to Netlify. So, what we can do here is just do Netlify deploy. And then we just say publish directory out. No, this is for... Oh, interestingly, I guess I could do this as a subdomain and just point at it. Um, that would be quite cool. But yeah, that was... That's how easy it was to just deploy our Next.js site onto Netlify. That was pretty easy. All we had to do was go and look at um, a starter and just see what was happening and yeah all we do is an export and push it out um, and Netlify takes care of it for us and then this just shows you how you can do other things with the documentation um, so then we have the I guess how we want to go about styling and stuff like that um, I'm going to add netlify.toml and I'm going to copy the one from Cassidy's here. There we go. See, I'm kind of... 
I'm half tempted to do a tailwind thing. And then add some extra stuff on top, which would be quite, could be quite cool if people want to see that. Or I can just style it from scratch. Um, I can do some Tailwind stuff. In fact, the thing that just distracted me two seconds ago was, um, I just got a, um, I've got a schedule of course planning for uh for a tailwind course so that'll be interesting i'm quite looking forward to that as well um yeah i don't know we could do this for tailwind there'll be some things that obviously we have to add in um yeah maybe we'll do tailwind can't then let's do tailwind i already had it open in another tab i think everyone saw although what do people think of um like for those that are new that haven't done any tailwind how do you find it to learn the the, the different things like once you've picked up a few you just get into the the hang of just cranking them out like it's easy to just go oh yeah it's like PX8 and flex and align center or item center or whatever. But um, before you get to that point, how? what's your cheat sheet? What's your go-to? Because I know that I'm pretty sure there's a VS Code um, plugin that will help. But I just wonder how other people go about it. Because I'm pretty terrible. I just leave the docs open and I just learn it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's like a gap there for someone to just um, be able to just make some kind of thing that just does it for you on the fly, like just shows you what you need. Um, the music's an absolute downer today. <laughs> yeah, my... Uh, some of the pointers for my course outline were things around... So, like, the things I like about it are more so uh, the tooling stuff that kind of abstracts you away from architecting things. That That's kind of what I like about it. Um, the parts I'm not so keen on is when I want to do something that's, like, not particularly out of the box or, like... Um, just when exactly when you've got like a load of classes and you have to keep reusing them, then you end up in the config doing stuff a lot. Um, also, it's kind of a bummer because, and it's not a fault of Tailwind, but because they use the hover colon um, syntax, that doesn't work with Pug, which is a shame because you'd be able to write really slick elements because you'd just be able to do dot, 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 and just write them all out. And it would look, it it does look good, but whenever you want to hover, you have to actually write it explicitly, which is a bit annoying. Um, right, so it looks like we're oh, what do I have? Okay, MVM use V twelve eighteen three. Yana Tailwind Dev. Cool. So yeah, for those that haven't seen it, let's let's just go through to get started. Um, okay, there's a Next.js one here. There you go. Setting it up. So we'll just follow this. So we've done the... F well, we kind of done the first one. <laughs> We'll go back. We'll add it again. We'll do at latest post CSS at latest and was it auto prefixer at latest? So my latest uh, 
or one of my more recent projects, I was using Parcel, and it's, there's a really annoying thing about post-CSS on Parcel at the moment, where you have to roll back auto-prefix to version 9. It just it catches me out every time. Um, yeah, and it's to do with this post-CSS 8 change. It's really annoying. All right, MPX tailwind in it minus p cool and yep yeah, we'll do perjury we'll just drop that in we're just going to go with all of that um Suggested defaults for now. Um, yep, include that, which is what we want. And include Tailwind in your CSS. Uh, we could go... Um, I kind of prefer this route, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, I kind of prefer this route. Just in case, because I know I'm going to be bunching more stuff in here, because... Oh, because it's CSS, it's going to be... I'm in stylus mode. Um, yep, 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 yep. Finally ensure your CSS is being imported. Yep, if you chose a different file, then defaults. Cool. I think we are good. I don't know what the music's up to tonight. It's just super obnoxious electronic. Um, let's try this one. Oh, what? You can actually see Twitch soundtrack has... Ah, oh, it's... Which soundtrack has changed? <laughs> now you can actually. That's cool. Um, right. Let's see what that gives us. Cool. So, local host. 3000 and then do you know what I should probably pull in the I should probably pull in the extension I don't actually think I have it on this machine um, <laughs> there we go. It says it's on. Why am I getting... Why am I getting this issue? Fair enough. Seems a bit weird. Right. My app component page props. That's just pulling in hello. What should we do? I guess we could start with this as trying to think about how many scenes I have. So I have like, we have the overhead cam, which is here, but it's the same. Um, I have a full cam, which is just a big screen at the moment. Um, BRB. 
live. That's kind of it. That's kind of all of them. So there's definitely opportunity to mix it up and change some here. So let's just start building it straight into here, I guess, for now. Um, I don't think how I want to do this. gonna go with hmm. it's more of a design quirk here um, how do we want it to look I mean I'm not gonna worry about doing anything like hooking up twitch API or anything like that today um, I mean we can do stuff like to be fair, we could do something like this. Um, we could hook up, I could show you how I do. Let me just grab it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is like the magic source to um it is Yeah, so I'm gonna do next on Netlify for these overlays. But I'm kinda like at the <laughs> it's more of a design thing at the moment, so I'm kinda like stuck on how I actually want it to look, not really the technical um, issues with it. Like normally when I do next stuff, um, I'm jumping in on someone's, like the project's already begun or I'm brought in to do like the the polish or take it like the, the next step. Like it's normally all been set up. Um, so yeah, I was just messing around for the last um, however long we've been on 20 minutes just showing how you deploy it but it's really easy um, you just do you just set this up in your Netlify Tommel and hit deploy which you can do from the command line anyway so like if we do it again um, so at the moment the page does nothing it's just a, a H1 um, I could do I don't know text blue 600 and I'm going to open the Tailwind docs to the side I mean probably well for now I'll just show uh, like this so I guess what is it flex item center is it justify center I think and then min height oh it's not min height full. What is it? It's min height. And I literally wrote this one about two hours ago. Um, and min H screen. <laughs> yeah, I always forget that one. Um, and then what have we got font size. I think I normally go like tech for this. I just do like text two XL or something. Um, well, I got to do some um, tailwind kind of stuff 
because I'm going to do a course on it. So I kind of need to put some tailwindy stuff out there. <laughs> so yeah, let's just deploy that to Netlify. There we go. Netlify deploy. Boom. Give it a second. Oh, that's my bad. Um, I didn't actually build it. So if we do a yarn build, yarn export. Yeah, it's more so, um, so I wanted to do it as a, um, more so like a course for not people that are like, well, it is kind of for people that are brand new to it, but it's not about, um, you know, how to do CSS. Because I think the, the misconception, not the misconception, but I think a lot of people look at Tailwind and they go, oh, it's horrible. It's not CSS or like it's not, um, it's ugly to look at. But I think it's really easy to um, discard it as like, Oh, it's it's not CSS, like it's just horrible or whatever. I'd have to go through my outline notes again, but um I wanna approach it from the sense of like the pessimist that looks down on atomic like utility CSS and I kinda wanna approach it from that point of view and kinda make people kinda maybe just chill a bit. There's a time and a place for both. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on. That and a storybook course. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. Like, you do, you do actually grow to love it. There we go. So there's a deployed version. Boom. And like, it sounds ridiculous, but I could just. I can just pull this into, oh no, I can't. Uh, let me give it a, I'm just gonna hop into Netlify for a second and give this a nicer name. <laughs> All right, uh, site settings. Change the site name, save. Oh, I know why. I'm so in, I need to do Netlify deploy prod. I'm completely in j.dev mode. <laughs> I could do one of them if we wanted to. That's actually a really neat one to, to set up. Um, so why is this not deploying to, there we go. So now it's on prod. Right now, if I add this as a source, I'm going to do this on the fly. Uh, add a browser source, add source, add a new source. Um, what should we call this? Coding overlays 2021. Uh, or should we just, we'll just call it next JS overlay for now. Right, next JS overlay, add source. You should see a horrible box over the top. JH three Y Twitch overlays dot Netlify. I can't type on this keyboard. This is the keyboard I'm dealing with for, because it's just handy to throw around, but it's it's horrible. Um, and then we'll say it's. 1920 by 1080 and we can take all of the done yeah so there you go you can see the horrible overlay over the top it's there <laughs> and I can move it around and you can see it kind of go around. But yeah, that's how easy it is. So that's like a browser source that was set up easy peasy. 
And what we can do is we can just hide it when we don't want it. So that's like our... We can just work with that as a... I guess a starting point. Um, we can ditch this nasty keyboard and come back onto this one. So, and I've just noticed, ah, new subs. <claps> Keeping the lights on. You notice we've got new lights, but I haven't actually, that's another thing we've got to do. So I bought some hue bulbs and we're going to create some uh, Twitch commands so you can change the lights because they are, uh, they're Zigbee, so we can do like the whole change the lights to blue or they don't, they're not very strong, so I should probably get some uh, darker ones. But yeah, you can see that blue around the Hulk, change it to green or like a purple. Or... It's better when that light's off. But then we've got one up top as well, but it kind of completely balks. Um, oh, they were turned down to like half brightness. That's why they're not showing up. <laughs> so you go red. Blue. So yeah, we're gonna make we're gonna make it so you can change that in the commands. But I've not. I need to do a day of like how to hook up the hue. I've not really looked at it yet. But I want to hook it into this app. So this project is like a a bigger overall one. But yeah, then there's a top light that's a hue as well. But I don't know how good that's gonna look. Um, so that's green, but I don't think that one's very strong. So it doesn't really... Oh no, red works. Oh. Blue. Yeah, it's only when they're really strong colours. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing to play with. And of course, this is all going to get, hopefully, documented on the, uh, the new site. I mean, I'll add... Um, I keep adding things each day. Um, I need to publish some today, but I have been actually, I have actually been writing stuff on here. Um, so I did all this optimization stuff the other day. So like, um, all the images on the site now, although some of them look a bit jank, but they're all AVIF, which is quite cool. Obviously where it's supported, but... Good camera mic arm. I do have a good recommendation. This is the one I use. Um, I use a toner mic T30. Um, it's really good. I I have two of them. So I use this one for this little webcam and then I actually use a proper one for my for my mic it's annoying because you can't quite see this little dude but if you ever seen a real Akuma um, it's the little the little birdie from that <laughs> I think I actually got this when I was in Tokyo uh, but yeah I'd go with a uh, if you can get one, they're normally on Amazon and they're not usually that expensive. Plus they come with like all these neat cable ties and stuff and the right mounts. And it's a pretty long arm. So depending on how big your desk is, uh, you'll want an arm that actually spans a good distance. So these ones are really good because they do actually go right across. And my desk is two meters long. So that gives you an idea. They do a smaller one if you only need a small one, but um, I ended up just shifting both. If you weren't, if it wasn't Brexit and mailing costs weren't so bad, I'd send you my Toner T20 because I have it in a box upstairs doing nothing and I doubt anyone will ever buy it. <laughs> but yeah, I... I bought the T20 and then realised it was a bigger size. Ended up with two T30s. So. <laughs> um, cool. So, this is a really basic overlay. 
let's do... There's going to be some weirdness around stuff we do with this as well, because I'm going to have to do some fiddly things with it. So I'm thinking... Probably more than what the arm costs in Germany. You you probably get it there. I don't know, what is it? Is it Amazon.d? There you go. Tona T30. That's the one I use. It is... Just because it comes with all the adapters. But it's also... Um, 940 mil. The only thing is it doesn't come with... So I use a, I have like a, is it, I have like a sure shock mount, but I was fortunate I was given that with my mic, so I don't have to, uh, I didn't have to look for one of them. Um, let's go with... This is the only thing. Uh, I'm going to do like... Mm. This rig is annoying when you want to do like... <laughs> I know it's fixed, but then it's... It'll be bottom zero. But like a height of, but I can't remember how the, yeah, it's H, isn't it? I'd probably go like H, let's go like H24. And we'll do, we're not doing a green div, but just so it's in here, local host. Where is it? Did we turn dev off? Oh. <laughs> That's funny, it's saying invalid uh, class, but it didn't do it a minute ago. Does it need restarting? <laughs> See where we're at. Yeah, it's not having... You have a 4K Logitech cam to use as an overhead. God, I wish I wish I had a 4K Logitech as an overhead. Which one is that? The Brio. I take it you must have a DSLR as your main camera. Am I missing something with this? Hmm. Seems like Tailwind extension didn't work. Yeah, it seems weird though that it was fine and now it's not doing anything. That seems a bit odd. And it is reloading as well, which is weird. Oh, that's good. If you manage to get one of them cheap, like... Uh, 
I'm going to check the DOM. I've probably just messed up a class name. Yeah, I have. Oh no, I haven't. I've... Oh yeah, I haven't given it a width. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I would have normally, if I was doing this, I would have normally done like a width of... Um, I would have done left zero, right zero. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so we just want W screen in there. And then we can do another one. This will be fixed, but we'll do right zero. Um, this will do width 24. And H screen. Cool. So that's yeah, six RAM each way. Cool. Now what I wanted to see is if I could do this where we're gonna get a bit fiddly, because I wanna do stuff like transition in. Um And I'll need to do yeah, because they don't have a there's no scale out of the box. So what I'll have to do is set up my own one. Which is fine. We can set up our own. A topic for streaming. Just whatever you want to do. Just do just just roll with it how I do, which is just whatever you want to work on or whatever you want to mess around with, just just do it. <laughs> you could do any of your like code pen stuff that you do or any projects. Like I just I just do whatever you feel like doing. And just and just turn up. That's that's the main thing. Um I'm terrible for that, so, like, I have to get more consistent with actually turning up, and then it's all good, um, and I notice it too, like, if I turn up more, you know, more people are going to turn up, um, <laughs> when I just disappear for months at a time, then no one turns up, which is to be expected, but yeah, I wouldn't worry about what you're going to do, I just do anything, and just, just start working on stuff, um, I think back to the last, like the first thing I made, um, and the first thing I made was like the, and I wish Twitch like saved your um, broadcast for a long time. I I have some backed up on a hard drive, which I should probably just like upload to YouTube for the for the lols. But they're like, I'm broadcasting it like ultra wide. You can barely see what I'm working on. The audio is from, like, a little webcam. You can't see me. Um, and I'm just... Yeah, it's just... Bah. <laughs> I'm just, like, working away on stuff. But I just turn up. And then you learn as you go along. Like, like the overhead cam thing. That didn't even come in until, like... Back end of last year. Yeah, you can, you can... You have the power to boot them out now. You can just, like right click and ban them or whatever you want to do <laughs> you have the power um see so yeah, we can get rid of that we don't need that anymore so i guess now for and this is going to be this is a bit of a fiddly thing so i actually want to do
<laughs> They're all here. Jeez, what? I've never seen so many. That's crazy. <laughs> See, I have two ideas for what I want to do here. I kind of want to do something like this. Um, maybe, I'm just going to double check I get this right. I'm pretty sure you do an object inside keyframes. <laughs> You've nailed it. <laughs> Yesterday I posted a, um, I tweeted um, CSS grid meets Webflow and I feel like I, I was surprised by how many people instantly knew exactly what I was referring to, um, which is just like the annoying YouTube advert. <laughs> and I feel like if I typed want to become famous into Twitter, I feel like a lot of people will know exactly where it comes from. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure if you want to do a keyframe, you normally just do an object and then a named reference, right? So I'm just double checking that. Um, like I say, I've just got Tailwind Docs open on the other monitor just because it's easier. And it's very bright when I bring it up like that. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure when you want to write your own, uh, you just do... Um, oh, so you can do, you can extend the animation and then you add the keyframe. So it's under extend keyframes. I always mess it up because I always think it's a different key to where it actually is. I always think it's like one at the top or something. But there we go. So keyframes. And we're going to do like, I don't know, let's go with scale in and I'm just going to do from um, I don't know how this is going to work actually because I've not actually done a clip path animation with Tailwind before but I'm going to do clip path inset 0 100 0 0 and then I'm going to do animation and we're going to do scale in and yeah, it's going to be scale in say two second, inf not infinite, forwards. Let's try that. And then I'm going to do it on the bottom bar. So we're going to do scale. No, I should change it really. I should do scale in like that. Yep, I know you don't like it. Variance value is not iterable. Uh, what have I done wrong? Extend animation. Ah, interesting. What have I blown up? I guess it probably doesn't like that. Hmm. Variance value is not iterable. Insert. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. See? I've done it here. I always get confused in the config and just mess it up. <laughs> it's telling me the right error and I'm just being a doofus. Um, 
variance value is not iterable. What's going on? Theme extend animation, theme extend keyframes. Yep, yep. What have I done wrong? <coughs> so we're back, but as soon as I throw this in, then it blows up. Oh no, it's okay now. Oh, that's weird. But it's not actually doing what we want. So uh, we'll go 0% and we'll do Oh yeah, that sh should be zero. That should be zero. Kind of weird though, it's not doing it. Um, Galen isn't being recognized. Oh, do I have to do my bad? Yeah, that's better. Always missing something, aren't I? That doesn't seem to actually work though. Um, Yeah, that's funky. Um, why is that not working? I mean, we can do it like this, but... I just wanted it to show it kind of working, but it's been a bit, maybe clip path doesn't want to play nice. I'll be honest, I've never done a clip path uh, animation with Tailwind before. There we go. So I might actually start from the other end and do something like a one second beam out. It's a bit janky. See, my idea is I'm wondering if we deploy that can we make it so that um, so we'll do that one as like scale X and this one is scale Y 
And my wonder is if we could do like a, it will look like they come out of the webcam, which could look pretty cool. So if we go back and we do, we change these to, this will be animate scale Y, and this will be animate scale X. And we'll have to change these. So scale X. It might just be that it's not going to perform very nice. Um, or it might be that because it's running on dev, it doesn't like it. So because we have it running twice, it's probably because it's running on two. Oh, that's interesting. Did I put scale X on both? No, that one is scale X and that one's scale Y. Scale X. Oh, I didn't change this. There we go. That should work. It's probably too quick, but what we can do is then let's just say we had some details in here. So I don't know. Um, so what do I have on mine? I have like a couple of these. So I have like one with a two and one with a four. Probably going to change these to be fair. Uh, you know, the one thing I really need to do is actually just link to my website. That'd be even much more useful. <laughs> um, and to be fair, I could just like bundle these into somewhere. So I could do, um, let me think about it. I could do, uh, let's just do it like this for now. We'll worry about porting it into something else later. My idea would be to have these as like objects and then something like that. And then, you know, that could be icon Twitter. That could be icon globe. And then I'll just do like tags.map. Um, T render div class name text white um, T dot label that should be golden. Yep, and then we'll do like I don't know. Um, what size do we want? Let's have a think. Text. I want it quite big, but not like super big. It's only five, maybe like, let's see what 5XL looks like, because it'll be half of the six rem. So text, 5XL. And obviously we're going to need to change this to flex. And this is one thing, <laughs> this is one thing that's a little bit of a bugbear. Um, I want to not be putting a margin on each of these. I only want to put it on like some of them. And this is where like lobotomized owl and tailwind kind of like maybe fall out. Um, because I want to create components and I want to do it from the top level and I want to say from here, um, children do this. Um, so like I might have a particular padding or a particular margin that I want. Um, I 
for now, uh, I'm just going to apply it to all of them. I'm just going to do like MX4 or something. And I will do I am center. Yeah. I feel I just I <laughs> like when you create um, components like there's something I really feel quite strongly about is like never apply the margin directly to the element because if you took it out and dropped it in somewhere else then it has a margin always attached to it and you don't really want that um, so yeah you could do something here where you just create a separate thing that just like appends a margin um, a margin class to each child um, it's probably the js -y way of doing it um, alternatively you could do you could do something like this um, you know you could do const tags equal um, and it takes children And then it says uh, return um, Why have I done that? I've done the wrong one. <laughs> I guess yeah, we just do oh man. What am I doing? Although it's gonna want a fragment, isn't it? So fragment. I'm probably going to need to import that. Children.map. C. think about this. Yep, makes more sense. Do that, then how do I want to do this? I could do And I'm going to put this into tags now anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Which is going to come from some data eventually. Mm. Yeah, but the parent passes it down. That's, that's how it should be. So if you were doing this in CSS, right, you would do... Uh, if you were going to do this in CSS, and you won't, you're going to see a wrapper div at the moment because it's a pain. Although I could just do, yeah, actually, what am I doing? I can just do it in here, can't I? I guess I was just trying to look for a way. I prefer writing this. Naturally, I would always just do this. So I would do like header. Something like that. That'd be what I would go with. Because you're in JS land, you have to do it a bit differently. So, um, And I haven't been majorly in React land for the last week or two. Right, so index equal tags dot length minus one. 
else am I? Six. We'll go with that. Just going to change that because I don't like it. Get rid of that. And yep. What's it going on about? Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, fragments not defined. It's fine. There we go. Finally. Took a minute. Um, so if we deploy that, let's see what it looks like. Um, yeah, we'll worry about that later. So one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Set up a deploy... Um... What should we call it? Deploy dry run, something like that. And this will just be Netlify deploy. And then we'll do pre deploy dry run yarn build and yarn export. Cool. So let's run that, yarn deploy. In fact, I want to do a I want to do a full on one. Do that as well, but I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna dupe it for now. That'll be fine. Yep, 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 yep. So I want to deploy this to prod. Yarn deploy prod. And to show you what I'm doing, there we go. All right, so that should just do that for us. Cool, and now it's deploying to prod. Off it goes. Caught me out with that rapidiv. <laughs> I'd sort myself out and get my head on React mode again. Why is it taking so long? <laughs> Come on. It's taking ages. Oh, you're in view that. You see, view is one that I've not had the chance to work with commercially a lot. Um, I've done a few things here and there with it. Um, I made some like demos and stuff of it, but um, I was never. A, I had only a, like a handful of commercial things pop up, and I didn't feel like I could. They were like projects where. I needed to like do the whole thing and at the time I just didn't feel very confident with Vue to be able to do that um, so I didn't take them on 
but I'd, I'd like to give it a go at some point. Uh. Right, so now that's uploaded, we should be able to, and it's probably going to cover over us. Did you see that? That was cool. That's really cool. But I don't know if it will work when we switch between, so let's see what happens. We go full cam. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah, so that's um we just wait for the boat to go. <laughs> what have we got? Yeah, that's one thing like I think when hooks came in it obviously made life a lot easier with React. Um but you obviously React Router is straight straight to reach. Um, I'm really happy with the fact that this animation is going to run each time because it's kind of exactly what I was after um, and it looks really cool I didn't run that time so if you're off for like more than I don't know, one, two, three then it will do it So yeah, like we're just I should have built it with you. <laughs> I like that though. It's cool. I don't know what to put in like the backdrop though when it's loading up. I guess that'll be a bit weird because it'll just be like my screen. I probably have to have an undercolor um underneath, but it's cool proof of concept that you know, you can actually do this. Like, it didn't take much, much at all to get that working. Um, and it actually, you know, that that actually loads up pretty nice. That's just running straight off of, um, yeah, that's running straight off of Netlify. Hmm. I like it. Um, I'll hide it again. So I guess, yeah, one thing here as well is to, so like, my webcam would need to be on the top. Let's see what that looks like. Um, full cam. Then I just need to like mess around with this, get this set up like kind of how I want it. So I could just drop it in there. Hmm. That's quite cool. You know what? I didn't even make it to version 2. Um, well, I've used one of... I think I used, like, I don't know, version 5 or 6. I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, how do I get my profile? Profile. Um, I The funny thing is, right, I've made one thing with, like, Angular and it ended up being Angular 6, there you go. It was like something actually popular with Angular 6. <laughs> oh, it's broken now. But yeah, it's just this like rotating cards view. And I couldn't work out how to fix it at the time. And you could just like click on these. This would be like blog post links, I guess. Um, 
But yeah, this was this is Angular six. Um <laughs> I used Angular JS like a lot. Um Yeah, I used Angular JS a lot. But I didn't use um I didn't do anything after that, apart from this, which was just like a mess around because I wanted to create this like card transitioning piece. Because I think this would be quite cool if you had it for like blog posts or something. Um, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just set this up on my... Put this onto my site and just have the option to say, just show me a list. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> I'll add it to my scrapbook notes. Um, yeah, it'll just keep going round. So it'll go round and then it'll start again and again and again. Um, but like that's how I... That was kind of how I introed myself to front end. I started playing with like animated carousels and things. Um, yeah, it's uh, maybe I'll remake that one. I should totally remake that one. <laughs> oh, so what I wanted to show was um, I was gonna throw it into here. So uh, I was gonna do an effect. What am I doing? I was going to run an effect here. Which was just going to set up... Um, which was just going to set up ComfyJS. And then... I think... Although it won't really matter, I guess. Let's just do a H1. Uh, we'll do text black and text, I don't know, five. What did we do then? Yeah, we did five Excel up there. So we'll do five Excel again. Although the annoying thing here is that it's going to re-render and that's going to cause that to animate again, which we don't actually want. Um, so we'll have to create like a content piece. Yeah, cause, mm, that's going to be a pain actually. Yeah, those those responsive layouts are an absolute pain. <laughs> I had a lot of trouble with um uh, no. Okay, that'll do. Uh I had a lot of trouble with this when I was messing around with the um when I was doing this piece cuz it's like this long uh scrolly kind of thing. And it was a bit of a pain. Um, <laughs> yeah, getting things to work on like smaller viewport and stuff. It's just a bit annoying. I um I used I ended up like I never really used it much before and then I've ended up using a lot of um the 56.25% trick, like, everywhere. I use it on all of these embeds so that they take up the full... Um, so they take up the full width and maintain their aspect ratio. But yeah, it just becomes a bit of a pain. Um, 
But yeah, at least I deployed it. It's deployed. I can actually get on with my life. Start creating some actual content again. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the, the thought I'm having here is because every time uh, we make a change, so I was gonna do, I was gonna show you how easy it is to do the Twitch command stuff. So let me show you, let me show you, because it's an absolute breeze to do. Um, part of me just wants to rewrite all this stuff I'm doing as well, because it's kind of horrible how I'm currently doing it. So yeah, if we do... Import comfy from comfy, and then we do comfy dot init, and I just pass it my user handle, and then we just say comfy dot on command. Yeah, and then you get like all of these, all of these little hooks you can use. So user command message flags extra. I'm just copying out what I've got at the moment, but I'm gonna do something like this. Uh, set message message, and then we're gonna do a message set message equal you state null and we're going to bring in you state right now oh it doesn't like something what have i done wrong oh we're not running anymore are we <laughs> that'll be why there we go Cool. It boots up so fast. What don't you like? Oh, what am I doing? Oh no, that sh Ah, I missed the JS. It's my bad. Import comfy from comfy. Comfy dot in it. A dot in it is not a function. Oh. Capital I. Probably the only people that do that. There we go. Alright, what's our error? Each child, right. So if you type a message in chat now, um, it's going to re-render the whole... It's going to re-render the whole thing, I think. Everyone's gone quiet. <laughs> hmm. Why is it not working? It's connected. But it's not... Not setting. Let's see. Let's try again. All right, we're connected. Ah, uh, I know why. I know why this is not working. Because it's probably because it's in use already. It could be because it's deployed already else. It's actually running, I think. Oh. 
that took ages to come through. Oh, is it because it's only it's only accepting commands, so of course it's not gonna do the just a message, so if you type in like There we go, now it's working. So if you do a command and then write something after it, so. <laughs> and now we get both. <laughs> cool thing is though, you notice how uh, it's not doing this. So, we're actually able to have the animation come in, and then we can keep this however we want. So, you know, we could have this hooked up to all sorts of things. Um, you could just write messages and just leave them on the page. So, you could just be like, message... And just have it like left there. So instead of like your message just disappearing from chat, you could just like, I could create a placeholder spot where you can be like, I want this to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and what Comfy does is, because we've just hooked that up, you get all this information. So you get all this kind of stuff come through. So, like, who's a mod? who's a VIP, all that kind of stuff. So uh, you see there, Angela's came through. She's a mod and a sub. She's also a founder. Um, although it's weird because when you're a mod, you can't be a VIP, which you'd think would be the same thing. <laughs> and you can't actually set that either. Uh, so yeah, I get a user. So you could do you could you could change this, you could mess around with it, you could do whatever you want really. You could do uh set message um user says and then I think that's like hooked up already. It's so rapid, isn't it? So there you go. Beat me to it. <laughs> and this is when you can like hook into it. So then you could say, oh, do you know what? If command equal um, message <laughs> got lost there. Then it will do it. Else, um, and this is where I need the like the extra pieces. But I could do, um, you know, we could do something really stupid here. So we could do something like um, let's change this. And then let's do. I think I think you know what's coming. So to start with, we could do like set color. Um, and what colors do we have out the bag? We have like we have blue. I know there's red, I know there's green, gray, although is it American spelling gray? Let's double check. Tailwind, what colors can we have? Colors. Uh, customizing colors. We have red, yellow, oh, it's A. Uh, blue, indigo, purple, pink, let's put them in. Indigo, purple, pink, and yellow. 
So indigo. Purple. Pink. Yellow. I know, I'm pretty sure I remember that you're not meant to do this with a tailwind, but we'll mess around with that after. Uh, we'll do set color, colors, uh, math.floor, math.random, times colors.length. And we'll do, we'll start with, I don't know, colors zero. And we'll do color, set color. Right, so now we're blue. And now if anyone writes anything that's not message, so message, hey. But if someone writes something that's not like bad message. <laughs> so one of them doesn't exist clearly, but. <laughs> so you could just change the uh, the overlay on fly. So let's see if this actually works. Um, so let's load that back up. Oh, we need to deploy it. Wait a minute, let's deploy it. So let's do... I need to really set up a... A repo for this, but let's do yarn deploy and we'll deploy to prod again. Let's see what it gives us. Cool. And let's bring it back. Yep, so we're running again here, so we should get blue. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Um, where's our overlay? Oh, our overlay's there, but it's not any color at the moment. Which is interesting. So let's try. Hmm. So why is the deployed version not working? Let's see if it works here. What's wrong? Oh, the colors haven't been... Ah, right, yeah, because the colors won't be sent because it's purging it. Um... Ah, oh, this is a little... a little thing that we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to work out for a second. Actually, um... I'm wondering if there's a way, maybe we could do something different here. Um, we could customize this to be... We could add a new rule, I think, which could be quite handy. I mean, for now, we could just, I've got an idea about something we could do quite cool, but for now, what we could do is not purge. 
and that will that will work. Or it should work. I want you to be able to change the overlay. That was the idea to make this like you can change it on the fly because it'll be really fun. <laughs> we'll make it work. And let's let's check it in the browser first, see what happens. There we go, so that's that's good. Now if we try it on the actual overlay. Might have to refresh it. Um refresh browser, refresh cache of current page. Right, there we go. Now, if we plug some messages in, let's see what happens. Ha <laughs> ha! You can change the overlay color on the fly. So if you all type in, then it should hopefully update on the actual overlay. But I don't know how well it will work. Um... It does seem to be working. So that one's... <laughs> this is cool. Um... <laughs> I feel like we should, uh, we should probably clip this one for Twitch. Uh, not for Twitch. We should clip this one for Twitter. So yeah, everyone... Type away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it'd be cool if you could guess the color. cool this is really cool so my idea was if we take the um, if we jump in our tailwind configuration whoa and yeah I just want to add custom rules um, I can't remember where this or how this goes in um, Spacing border radius, yep, 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 yep. Prefixing, important. Why am I forgetting how to do this? I think I'm looking at the wrong part. going on just having a mind blank
Yeah, so it should be. And it's going to be a bit of a hack. But it should be like this, if I'm right in thinking. So const plugin equal require tailwind plugin. And then if we did plugin function add components. Let's just change it, <laughs> changing the overlay for us. Cool. Um, And I just want this, so I want like, um, we're going to call it Hugh BG. And we're going to see if I can come up with something here. So I want background, but I want it to be HSL. And I want it to be var Hugh zero. Um, eighty percent, fifty percent. I think that's right. And then I'm just going to do add components. Components. What have I messed up there? Oh, I see what I've done. I put that in the wrong place. My bad. Right, so if we run this, and the trick here is hopefully going to work. Um, so instead of this colors, I'm on the cool. So instead of that let's fix this because it's doing my head in um, key equals uh, t t dot label and here I'm going to change this so else if command equal hue set um, set hue message and we're going to change this to hue and we're going to do hue as zero and then this bar we're going to get rid of this because we don't need it and we're going to do dot uh, we're going to do BG hue. And BG hue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say style. Hue. Hue. I have no idea if this will work, but in my head it should. So... We're going to try and make it work. Okay, what does it look like? Hmm. Hue zero. BG hue. Huh, BG hue is not working. Maybe it doesn't like our HSL. Plug it. Oh, I've called it the wrong thing. That's why. Let's just change it around, there, boy. There we go. <laughs> hara hara hara. Had a complete melt there. Right. So now, if you type hue and give it a color anywhere between 0 and 360, that will change the
the overlay. Rad. Q180. Q50. That is cool. Q42. <laughs> Love it. Q320. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> yep, Q Nan. You guys. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we put something in for a. Uh, maybe we put a little tester in there. Um, if command is hue and pass in um, message ten. Oh, how do you? Knew this is. I feel like this is one of those interview questions that messes you up. Uh, Nan check. <laughs> oh, wait, what am I doing? Uh... Not his nan. There we go. Let's try that. And while that deploys, we'll check out what's this? Fidget.dev. Oh, nice. Well, this is cool. I'm going to have to have a look at this. Oh, so this will... So this is a way to test... Right, so this is a way to test things out. It's quite cool. So it's kind of like how Streamlabs does it. So Streamlabs has this thing where you can do test widgets. So I can just test my own. Um, the only thing is it doesn't actually put the, um, the message in. Hmm. Yeah, this is really cool. How do I... I'd like to know how you do this, though. How do I use this? <laughs> or do you just do this to just... Uh, and then you just start simulating stuff. This is really cool. Thanks for sharing this. Um, yeah, I'll add this to my scrap notes for today. That's really cool. Um, what are we doing? We are... So our hue message should work now. On prod still. But it should actually change 
but not do it for... It might need a refresh, actually. Refresh the cache. Oh, is it broken? Oh no, there we go. So it's come back. And if we do like message, hey, and then hue 240. So that nan isn't working, is it? <laughs> um, that nan check's broken everything. Hmm. Interesting. Is nan is nan pass in message? Oh, right, so we want that. Yeah, I... Oh, yeah, and I've also... What am I doing? It's late. It's late. Give me that. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, so let's give it a bash again. So, hue test. It still breaks it. And that shouldn't work. Because isnan test is not gonna. Oh, it will. Oh, wait. Mm. Not is not. Oh, man. I gotta go back to my original thought. Is Nan always. These things always confuse me. And it's like. Right, Hue test. Right, so that. Didn't break it, but Hue 180 should work. Yay! We're back. Cool. Yeah, just reading that message is confusing. <laughs> it's late. It's late, and that's confusing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> that's cool, though. That's really cool. So, yeah... Now there is, there is a naughty trick that I got here and I, I don't know if this one will work. So let's try this one. Because if this one works, then it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, we're just going to add GSAP. We don't need any of my private plugs. Um... What's that about? We're already on that. Give me that GSAP. Come on. There we go. Cool. Right. Yandev. This is going to be a cool project. It's going to be a cool one. I will push up a repo for this as well. So we can just pull it down and mess around with it. 
So what I thought here is if we did import GSAP from GSAP, I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. Um, if oh, this is going to be cool, else if command equal, uh, let's do overlay party. We're going to do gsap dot. I need to think about this. I'm going to take a ref and do you know what we'll call that one bottom bar? Oh, that one's vertical bar, isn't it? Sidebar. <laughs> Just changing the name as I go. Uh, this one's going to be bottom bar, and I need to use ref. And then, yep, yeah, const uh, bottom bar equal use ref null, and const sidebar equal use ref null. And then in here, I'm going to do a gsap dot. I'm going to do a timeline. And I'm going to do gsap dot timeline. Repeat 10. Set. And like I say, I have, I have no idea if this is going to work, but it might. We're going to set it to zero. <laughs> and then we're going to go dot two. Oh, we could have done a from two here, really, actually. Probably makes more sense to do a from two. Um, annoyingly, I've got to put them back in. So let's say it starts at hue zero and it goes through to hue 360 with a duration of 0 0.5, which I think is the default anyway. But let's just see what that does. I don't know if that will work, but I'm interested to know. Well, that's funky. <laughs> that is funky. And you know what we need to do then? We need to do those lines coming out. But for now, this proves a concept. Um, I think the E's needs to go there. A bit too flashy, but um so then technically I guess this is gonna be interesting because then if I did like Q one eighty, and then I did overlay by. It's going to go back. So what I should do is on complete. Um, 
doesn't make any sense, but it might work. Or actually, I could just do... I could just do a gsap.set here. So I could just do gsap.set um, bottom bar dot current sidebar dot current and then we could do that. So if we do like Q two AE, which is like purple, and then we do overlay pi. It should do the rainbows, but then go back to purple. Oh, it would if I hadn't put an error in there. Let's try that again. Hue to A. Oh, does it need refreshing? Q to A and then overlay party. And it should go back to purple. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. That is so cool. A little bit of tailwind and a little bit of G sap. And now I could technically do the purge because I don't I don't need to worry about the colors. We can actually pull this back in. Technically I'm just gonna back out of that for a second and do that. Right, let's deploy this. Let's deploy this and then let's see it actually working. Right. If I find my mouse. <laughs> and I'm just going to refresh the cache at the current page. Cool. So now you should be able to type party overlay and see it actually happen over the broadcast. Which would be pretty cool. <laughs> that looks really cool. It's a bit flashy, but... <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so... <laughs> that's so much fun. Yeah, that is cool. Right, and on that note, I think I'm going to call it for today. I'm going to try and keep these a bit shorter again instead of sitting here for hours. Yeah, I've done like over two hours. But if I do two hours, it means I come back and do two hours tomorrow. I can keep it more consistent. So, cool. I'll call it there. What color should we end on? Also, I'm going to pop a few of them. Combine it with party. That's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, you too. Thanks for uh, thanks all for stopping by. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, I think I'll do the stripes that I've got for the bear, and I think I'll do them up and down. So that'll be really cool, because then it'll just be like behind, which will look really rad. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll mess around with that. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe we'll carry on with this tomorrow. Um, or maybe we'll do something else. I'll put the poll out on Twitter. We'll see what people want me to work on. And I will work on it. So, yeah. Thanks for stopping by. And hopefully see you on the next one. And we will leave with key for today. See ya. <laughs>